Hey buddies, Jose from Wire Ninjas. We are home technology integrators. We build systems and circuits of integrity in homes and offices. Check us out at Wire Ninjas on Instagram to see what we're up to on a daily basis. Or DM me if you have any questions or need anything at all. I'm happy to help you in any way possible. Now, we are installers, audio, video, data, but we're also Dream Media's install partner or their preferred partner for this area New York New Jersey Connecticut as well as Pennsylvania what that means is um, a couple things one we make content for you guys on their channels uh, this to me is a beautiful thing because uh, at this point in time I do it for you guys I'm trying to put out good content for you the homeowners the audio video or home theater enthusiast as well as the AV installers I've noticed a couple of you guys watch my videos and you started to take a look at my techniques, you know, my knowledge, my skills, and my protocols, as well as implement them for yourselves. And that makes me really happy because I've been developing these things for a long time in the field. And if I can just hand them to you, if you don't have to spend years figuring out what's best, how to do things best, um, to me, that's just awesome. The potential for enrichment for another person's life, career, whatever it is, to me, that is just priceless. So. Yes, we're Dream Media's partner. Uh, we perform installations. If you contact them, they're gonna send you to us to do your install. Um, but also, we both have integrity, and that's why we agreed to work together. So, we film videos together, and we provide install in this area because they don't service this area. So, today we're gonna talk about building circuits in a finished wall environment. And this video is for, again, the homeowner, the AV installer, as well as the enthusiast. So we're gonna cover a lot of stuff here. I have this pretty organized. <laughs> I'm spending as much time as I possibly can on developing this content for you guys in an effort to bring you rich, good stuff. So let's not blow the pot here. Let's just get into it. Now let's go into the wiring theory or the protocols involved with getting the circuits built in the walls. Step one, origin and destination. Establish the origin and destination of the circuits you're building. Step two is to set or clear the wire path. And let's cover each one of those real quick. Origin and destination, what that means is, the original origin, we're branching off from this single gang. We already have the wiring here, we're gonna tap into, right, to the house wiring. This is our origin. Now there's two destinations involved up here. One is the access point on this side, which we've already installed. Number two is the access point all the way down here. We left this one out on purpose so you can see a couple things and we'll go over. We have origin, we have two destinations. Now we have to set or clear the wire path. And that involves a couple things. Number one, when you're going up in a vertical fashion, most of the time, the wall is clear of obstructions. Sometimes it has insulation just like that. Sometimes you'll have foam insulation and <laughs> you're gonna have some fun with that foam insulation, buddies. So, in this particular wall, yeah, we'll get into the cutouts. I know, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate you. All right, so in this particular wall, let's get inside there. Let's give them what they want, Steve-O. So, check it out. When you have an open wall, it's nice and easy. You can shoot a snake up. Steve, grab a snake and shoot it up. See how we do that. So being that we had a cutout on the bottom already, we knew it was an open wall. We knew we could easily pass a snake. But to know without uncertainty, literally the first thing we did was this, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. We sent a snake up the wall. Now put your finger on it, pull it out, measure it. No, 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 from the bottom, just like we did. Like, let's start over as if we were doing this right over again. Let's show these guys exactly how we do things. Yep. So now he's going to take a measurement. Basically, he's, he's doing what we call probing the wall with the fiberglass rod. And so what he's doing is he's putting his, this lower hand, he's putting his hand, keeping it there exactly where the snake was. Now we know the snake can go all the way up this wall. We also know we're hitting a header or a footer. If we were a floor above, this is a header. So now we know that we can clear all the way up to here. We also know that there's a header up here. So now this tells me I need a nice long cut so that I could drill through the header. 
The reason is because I like to use augers. Augers are very long. A drill with an auger is about 14 inches, right? Something like that. So we make long cuts when we're dealing with headers or footers. So we make this cut, we drill through. Now we know we're above the header. We need to get into the vaulted ceiling. So the next cut was, or would be, this cut right here. Now this, I knew, well, I guessed it was a beam or that we'd have not one, but two headers to deal with or multiple studs. So I said, let me make a large cut here. I can shoot my snake up and then I can reach all the way in, which I did end up doing. I was all the way shoulder deep in here to reach my cut. Let's see if we can get some footage. Yeah, see, it's pretty deep in there. That's why I made a large cut. Um, larger cuts and smaller cuts where you need them. This is gonna come from time and mileage in the field, but we're gonna show you how, we, how this played out so it can help you guys. Now, another thing about cuts that me and Steve want to show you is any cut we make, we label and we also provide orientation. So we have labeling and orientation. We know where to match the cut up. We're not playing, I don't know, Tetris, what you want to call it. We're not playing Tetris. This is to save time in the field. For me, my crew, as well as the homeowner, you know, we try to be efficient. So we only charge what is necessary. Uh, we don't like to waste time. I like to be efficient. So. A large cut was necessary there, in my opinion, and it allowed me to grab the snake, get over that second header, and pull the wire to this location. Now, we need to get back to the destination. Um, we snaked over from the access point hole all the way to this cut. This was an easy run. We went from there up through the header. We were here. And we got from the access point over to the same hole, pulled the wire through to the access point, terminated, tested, validated, and threw that access point up. Now, I'm gonna show you on this side how that plays out a little bit. No, it's cool. So, going back to our original protocol of origin and destination, yeah, that would be smarter actually, so I can be on the camera. Because the people love my beautiful face. <laughs> All right, so origin and destination. Part of the establishing the destination, put the light on if you need, bro. Put the light on. I can see it right here, yeah. Let's get the light on, be better. So part of establishing these particular destinations was getting this mounting bracket up and drawing a little cutout. So we, we knew when we make this hole, it didn't exceed the access point. We need a hole large enough so that the, the cat cable can twist. This is, the access point twists on a couple inches, so we needed a nice clear hole so that we didn't, we didn't entangle the wire and get a really hard bend. That's why I make this particular hole. You can see the pencil line. We drew the, the, the actual perimeter of the access point. So we had a meter, a depth meter, a clearance meter, so that we knew we'd stay inside the access point. When this access point goes on, it's gonna look just like the other one. You'll never see this hole, it's beautiful. So we covered the first one. Now let's cover the longer cut, the longer or the longer uh, circuit path. So we established this as the second destination. Now we have to get through the vaulted ceiling. So the vaulted ceiling, each edge, at each edge there's corner. This is what the ceiling looks like. It closes off on both sides and you have a triangular space that you can traverse the snake and run the snake through. So. If we take a look down this way, let's take a look down this way. We can see the straightest path is around this cut. We had a large cut here. I'm not gonna lie, I try to run the snake, but it's too close to that corner edge of the vault. It was too limited in space up there. Now, we needed to shoot all the way across the ceiling. And the best way to do that for this instance, and in a lot of instances, let me take this real quick was to make one large cut in the middle and one large cut, or I'm sorry, one small cut there and then one small cut here. With these three cuts, minimalizing the wall damage, we were able to traverse this entire hallway. And so the order of operations is go from large cut, fiberglass rods, you tie two or three together, the cut's large enough so that you can get 
over the studs, but not start hitting the studs above. You can manipulate the cylindrate much better in a more linear, straight path with a larger cut. And then you grab your snake at each end. So you go from large cut to small cut, grab your snake, pull it through. Then you can pull the wire all the way back this way. And then the same deal. You go from large cut, snake, 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 Find your fiberglass rod at this cut, pull it through, and you traverse this entire space. I would say this is about 20 feet. 20 feet straight through a vault with three cuts. I think it's, it's about as good as it gets. Hmm. I think the last piece of this would be to actually take a look up there if possible, buddies. I wanna show you what we're dealing with. I'm trying to get, <laughs> maybe let's go in this large cut. Yeah, let's go into large cut here, sorry. I want you guys to see what it looks like up there. I have a really good visual map in my head of what it looks like, but it would really help you guys. You see what I mean? We're working a triangle. You see how it closes off at each side? It's gonna close off right around there too. So we wanna work this central pathway. Look how tight that is. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, try to give you as much insight and information as possible. Now, horizontal cuts across a wall are different. You gotta stud every 12 to 16 inches and you have to track cut across. We've shown you some of that. I plan to do separate videos on each and every possible thing I can to give you guys everything. I'm trying to give you all the tools in my book, all the knowledge that I have. Um, let's talk about the finish work, the repairs. We showed you how to run the wires. Let's talk about the finish work. So you need woods. We left this just wooded. So two braces, I would recommend an inch, maybe an inch and a half past the cut. You throw a screw, screw it to the wood and you have a nice brace. Now we can put the drywall on, secure the drywall to the bracing. Let's take a look. I left these open just for you guys. You can see that's a finished patch cut. The final piece of that is taping and spackling, which I'm not gonna show you guys because <laughs> that's a whole separate video. Uh, I'm pretty good at spackling. Um, there's people that are much better that do it a lot more than me, but I've, at this point, I've spackled whole entire homes. I've gone through a lot of gallons of spackle, so I'm pretty damn good at it, but um, not to the point where <laughs> I don't think I'll make a video on it. Maybe I will, and uh, there will be some heavy scrutiny from the community, <laughs> but um, most important thing is that we showed you how to do what we do. Hmm. I think that's about it. <laughs> All right, gang. So I wanted to do one final walkthrough and show you guys after the patchwork was completed and, uh, give you guys a look, see at the finished product. So tarps are gone. The APs are up, both of them now. Walls are taped and patched. I normally use mesh tape. I used to use paper a long time ago and I decided to go to the store and get paper and experiment. I did lighter coats here, let the paper dry, lightweight spackle compound. But on the other side, I went a little heavier. Check it out. I went a little heavy on these to see if we can get like a one coat solution and then just sanded paint. This is just for my own, my own experimentation purposes. Nothing to do with this video, but I figured I'd lay it on you guys. Um, other access point is in and the area is clean. When you tarp, when you tape and tarp, the area gets cleaned up in a GIF. Now, in summation, let's go over everything. So we started with tools, prep work, prep work. Tarp and tape, tape and tarp. Then we got into what tools you need. We showed you what you need generally. I may have left something out. I apologize if I did. I try to be as thorough as I can. Uh, <laughs> just do understand that we are on a live working site here. So I have to take time aside and try to organize and structure this stuff so that I can try to mitigate any oversight, but I'm doing my best and I appreciate you guys and I do it for you guys and thank you. But Prep work, tarp and tape, tools necessary. Then you get into the wire or the circuit path, establishing the origin destination, and then you make your cuts in between. 
and then you can lay in your wires and then you can lay in your end devices and um, well termination testing validation then end devices followed by repairing of the walls once you repair your walls you're clear to clean up I would not clean up uh, until the walls are patched, the lines are verified. Same thing, until you verify those lines or validate those lines, I wouldn't put the walls together. Um, we do things in a specific order for specific reasons. Uh, due to time and experience on the field, it just seems to be the best way to do this stuff. You know, we have to logistify everything to be efficient and you have to have protocols in place to mitigate liabilities and to ensure that you're doing the same quality work site in, site out. So, I think that about wraps it up. I just want to thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your time and um, peace and love. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Oh my gosh, is that the Dream Media van in my neighborhood? What? Wait, Dream Media, come back! <laughs>